Welcome to the Experience Strategy Podcast, where we talk to customers and experts about how to create products and services that feel like time well spent. And now, here are your hosts, experienced nerds, uh, strategists, Dave Norton and Aransas Savas. Welcome to the Experience Strategy Podcast. I'm Aransas Savas. And I'm Dave Norton. Today, Dave and I are joined by Jay Coppert and Jorge Perez. They're both thought leaders and entrepreneurs in transformational travel. So Jay considers himself a guardian of the planet and really of the transformative power of travel. He and the organizations that he participates in and leads are dedicated to guiding people, places, and tourism in transforming thriving and becoming more conscious and regenerative. Jorge Perez is a pioneer. (laughs) There's no other word for him. He's really been a leader in conservation through adventure travel and private land conservation. He's the founder of Tierra del Volcan, an award-winning travel company and former president of the Ecuadorian Ecotourism Association, as well as the South American ambassador for the Transformational Travel Council. Jake and Jorge are joining us today for an important roundtable discussion on transformation as applied through the lens of travel. Our hope is that you as a listener can tune into the stories that they're sharing and whether you're working in the space of technology or retail or finance or apparel or healthcare or you name it, you can hear within their story the potential to drive meaningful customer transformation through your customer experience. Jake, Jorge, thank you so much for joining us today. I wanna start by talking about where you're focused now. You both have such exciting and influential backgrounds, and I'm curious where that's led you today. What are you up to right now, Jorge? Um, well, thank you for having me here. It's such a pleasure to share with you today. Um, well, you know, uh, I will say that my two major goals will be conservation and um, touching people's life through adventure travel. So I will say that we could talk about adrenaline fuel conservation, mm. in which is this mixture between adventure travel um, that will lead you into connecting to nature, but also to yourself. What do you hope to achieve in 2023 related to that? Um, That's a a big question. Um, (laughs) So- No warm up uh, here, huh? (laughs) No, no. (laughs) Uh, So one of the goals, you know, is to, to, to be able to take tourism the next level, you know, in, in, in every aspect that we're involved. So within our lodges, we have three lodges in the Andes of Ecuador. So we, between our lodges, um, to get more unique experiences that we're thriving. Um, we have invested in 2022 that our 50% of our energy of, uh, of our main lodge will come from uh, solar panels, so sustainable sources. We are um, carbon, um, negative company but we're we're uh promoting that more and also getting more involved within the 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 transformational experiences because we we have developed a lot of very nice transformational experiences but we have realized that that you have two different kinds of guests that uh, related to transformational travel those that that want to be fully immersed in this type of experience and those that um it's still a lot out of their comfort zone. So um, we want to, to, to develop tools that allow you to more um, softly connect you, you to these transformational opportunities that tourism has to offer. Hmm. Exciting. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to talking more about who those people are. Uh, a quick check in with you, Jake. What's what's calling you and taking your attention these days? Uh, it's been it's been years, uh, primarily focused on on changing the world through travel. Uh, I know that sounds big and audacious, but uh, that's that's what we're doing. Uh, and uh, 
Uh, that's We're doing that at the Transformational Travel Council. Uh, we provide transformative education, uh, and we've got this incredible global community uh, from all sectors and categories of tourism that are, are really working to, to elevate travel to its highest potential. Uh, and so that's that's taking all of my focus and then some, you know, including my time with you guys at the Transformation Economy Collaborative, uh, diving into, you know, how, how we can define and lead and measure transformation uh, as we go forward. Yeah, it's a real thrill to do that work together to understand what transformation means to travelers and to customers across categories, really. But there's so much we don't understand about what people really value in that space. So I'm excited to talk more about that today. So as we as we bridge into this conversation, I'm curious to hear from you, Jake, first, why you believe transformation is so important to the world and to the shape of travel. Uh, why do I think I, why I, in this in this moment, uh, you know, everyone's talking about transformation and shifting the paradigm, uh, you know, and, and, you know, coming off the pandemic, we all had an opportunity to be maybe a little bit more introspective than we have have been in the past. And, and I, I think that's really important for our, our own evolution, uh, you know, as uh, you know, in, in, in humanity. Uh, and uh, I think that, uh, you know, many of us around the world are, are waking up to uh, this idea that we can really be more intentional about, you know, how we live and the choices that we make uh, and how we can be better versions of ourselves. Uh, you know, in regard to travel and tourism, you know, I think travel was really born out of this idea of, uh, you know, stretching and learning and growing into new ways of being and engaging the world. Uh, you know, and I think the ripple effect of that, uh, you know, that, that brings positive benefits to our families and our homes, uh, in our communities and the places that we visit. Yeah. And I know one of the things you've talked a lot about is the unintended consequences of global travel and the effect those have had on the world. How do you see transformation as playing a role in reshaping the way travel happens? Yeah, well, I think that, uh, that uh, you know, the last 20 years as travel really became more accessible uh, to, to many, uh, you know, it, it sort of lost touch with its with its soul, uh, you know, and, and, and got quite disconnected from the reasons why we travel, you know, and, and that, that was rooted in, you know, questing and pilgrimage and rite of passage, really looking inward. Uh, and uh, I think that, uh, you know, travel has got into like, you know, the OTA model of make it easy and convenient. But I think that also leaves it sort of empty. Uh, and, I, and I think that uh, as travel continues to, uh, to evolve uh, and understand it, understand and really embrace its inherent potential to create positive change within individuals um, and, and, and the lives that travel and tourism touches, uh, you know, I think it's, it's really stepping into its, its power. Uh, and I think given some of the developments around flight shaming and, you know, given, given the, the, the climate collapse and, and all of the arguments that, that, that are coming up on that level that, have, that, are, that, are, that are absolutely fascinating as travel sort of starts to reinvent itself in response to some of these, these changes, uh, you know, I think that most importantly, uh, where, where travel and tourism is going is, you know, they're going to have to realize that real change comes from within. Uh, and, you know, so when, when we talk about travel, is there a better venue for us to, to spend some time looking inward? Uh, and so I think that uh, as travel evolves, we'll really start to embrace this, this transformation economy as this catalyst for, for global change. I love that. And I know you, Jorge, have been one of the early leaders in applying some of this thinking. You mentioned at the beginning that you intentionally designed transformative experiences for your guests. Can you give us an example of, of a way in which you do that? Um, yeah, um, we, we, we have different programs depending on, on, the, uh, on the transformational side. We, we, we have developed three, three concepts. One is um, related to conservation. The other one is to self-development and the other is for family connections. So the, um, probably like like I will go with the because uh, the, the the conservation one is called twenty five seconds and it's it's designed to let you understand and connect 
to human evolution, you know, and, um, and the reason of the name is because if you put uh, humans um, is existence on planet Earth compared to 24 hours, if we take the planet Earth and compare it to 24 hours, humans has been in this planet for 25 seconds. Mm. And so it's so common that we think that we're saving the planet. And it's like, no, we're not saving the planet. We're saving ourselves. The planet was able to survive without us for, you know, 23 hours, 59 minutes and 35 seconds. So when you, when you understand where in time you are, so what we do with this we, is we invite you to participate on a play which has three acts, the beginning, the evolution, and the future. And in, in each one, we, we invite you to bring your inner child. And we take you to Galapagos, for example, to, uh, first to the Amazon basin, to share with the local indigenous that are hunters and gatherers, to understand the human's beginning, you know, why we, we are like we are. A lot of, of our behaviors, even though we think that we're so evolved and different from our past, are based on our our beginning when we were cavemen, when we were hunter gatherers. So let's understand that part. Um, you know, and then we go to the Galapagos uh, again to to understand the evolution where Darwin developed his theory. But the concept is to show you what Darwin got it right and what Dar Darwin got it wrong. And also, why is different with humans? You know, in, in when we, when we're talking about evolution, we have natural evolution, but we also have um, conscious evolution. And from what we know, we humans are the only ones that understand or are able to develop this uh, consciousness uh, towards evolution. And then we take you to the Andes um, to explore the future. You know, to to imagine where as a species we want to be on the next 25 seconds. Um, so it's still having fun, it's still exploring, it's still um, seeing some of the most beautiful places in the planet while using it to understand why we are like we are, but also to, to, to see our future. Um, so that's one, one, one example. Um, the, the other example, for example, for families is that Somehow we're, we're disconnected now and it's, it's difficult with all the technology and all the noise in our lives to get connected between teenagers and parents. And so we offer a, a space to disconnect and reconnect. And through the right facilitation, um, we guide you into having the right conversations and, and a family and, and being able to establish family values. Um, and so with this, we do some uh, horse encounters in which horses will reflect what's going on in your family. Or you, we, we, there's a moment where your kids will write you a letter um, to, uh, that is a guided letter so that parents could understand where, where, where their kids are. Mm -hmm. And it's so common to hear parents to say, oh my God, I didn't know my kids were, was there. <laughs> Um, so those are the kind of programs, and, and then you're able to establish some family values uh, uh, with certain tools, you know, that are visual tools like a vision board in which you're able to, 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 to have an agreement between the, the groups and, and, and get into a commitment. Okay. Um, so those, those are a couple of examples of, 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 of uh, journeys that we're offering that are super beautiful and, and, and life-changing, but at the same time, uh, it keeps with the essence of travel, which is seeing these new places, connect to their energy, connect to the, to the planet, to, to, to understand, to see other cosmovisions, for example. So, because somehow we Westerners tend to think that our way is the right way, but there's <laughs> so the many different way. ways or the only way. <laughs> Um, so there's so many other ways to understand the planet. And, and for me, the beautiful thing of traveling is that, that you could leave everything behind, yes. you know, and, and be whomever you want to be. But at the same time, there's only one thing that you could not leave behind, and that's yourself. Mm -hmm. So why don't you use it to understand yourself better? Why don't you use that time to see yourself without judging, without, you know, this, this bias that my, you might have about yourself mm -hmm. and, um, and connect deeper as you've never done it before. And that's 
travel is the perfect tool for that. And, and that's why we connect transformation with travel and also um, a lot related to conservation. I, I, I think that um, global warming is not an environmental problem, is a, is a human problem, is a, is a social crisis. So, so that's something that also we, that we could ex explore later, but it's part of what we want with this. Wow. Yeah, and I, I'm thrilled to hear the way that you're approaching this. As Jake mentioned early on, we, along with Jake and a number of other leading companies, are can, are participating right now in what we call the Transformation Economy Collaborative. And it is a think tank and research process and innovation study and <laughs> activation for so many companies that are focused on leading effective and impactful customer transformations for their company. And together, we're really looking at how to make those as impactful and meaningful as possible, both for customers and for companies. And we've uh, we found within these categories, and it's a part of the interesting thing about this is that we're, we're not just looking at travel, we're getting to look at travel alongside what transformation means in finance and what transformation means in technology and in retail and these wide ranging categories. And what we're finding is that transformation follows a pretty consistent flow. But when we talk to the youngest people and we ask them what transformation means, the first thing they talk about is travel because it is, I think for so many people, the first notion that we have that if we get out of our normal way of being and looking at the world, we can start to see something new that leads us to ultimately be something new or to shift in some big or even small way. And so as we look at it, what we see happen is that people have some sort of, of catalyst, right? Either some really challenging moment happens or some big desire in them emerges to see the world differently. And, and Jake used the word learning. Through some sort of experience or stimuli, they start to expand their perspective and see the world a little differently which ultimately then causes them to act differently and finally to feel differently. And, and as you described the transformational journeys that you've designed for your customers across these three different goals, each one of them really consciously and intentionally built in those moments. And we're so excited to help so many customers and companies learn how to do that in a way that has impact for both the bottom line of the businesses, which ultimately is essential if we're all going to keep doing this, but also every bit as importantly, it's impactful and effective for the customer, the traveler in your case, and in your case, for the world, for for the places that that these people are visiting, and so it is, it is a really beautiful, cohesive vision of transformation that that you've painted for us. Thank you, Jorge. So, Dave, as you're listening to this, what what questions do you have, or or what is it about the the space of transformational travel that you feel has been most surprising or exciting? Oh, the whole thing, the whole category is just. So fun. You know, I was talking to a friend the other day and uh, she was describing kind of what her idea of transformational travel was. And uh, I was kind of explaining what we were doing. She's like, man, that's exactly what I need. Because when I go on trips, I tend to focus on kind of just relaxing, enjoying myself kind of pleasure seeking, kind of that hedonic component mm -hmm. uh, to travel, but travel can have a purpose and you can still have a really enjoyable time. You know, Jorge, I would love to go on that, uh, one of those excursions with you. That would be absolutely um, fantastic to see those different places and, and to see them through different eyes. And, and so this, this idea of having a purpose when you travel that could be a higher purpose, that could be an important purpose to you, and trying to fulfill on that, because 
it's not enough to just have the purpose. You've got to be able to kind of fulfill, to deliver on that for, either for yourself or with the, the assistance of uh, great travel companies. And I would pay a premium for that type of an experience, mm -hmm. right? I would pay more for that type of an experience than I would for spa treatments or things of that nature. So I, I think it's a win-win as companies are trying to find places to generate more revenue, they need to be thinking about transformation, personal transformation as a part of that. And Jake, I see nodding your head uh, in agreement there. What do you wish these traditional travel companies understood, Jake? You read my mind. Um, yeah, you know, I, uh, I think travel has just fallen into this bad habit of, of uh, like transformation just sort of happens on its own. And it's this, this epiphany or breakthrough. Uh, and, and, and maybe in the past it has been like, we've all had, had those moments, but uh, you know, where, where we're going and, and you know, what I'm really excited about is shifting it from this passive engagement to active engagement, right? To, to, to be moved, we have to move more than our feet. We got to move our hearts and our minds. Right, which is what 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 Dave is getting at there with 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 purpose, and right now for the most part, you know, with with transformation and transformational travel being a trend in the industry, uh, you know, it's 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 actually doing more harm than good in my opinion because it is setting travelers up to you know with more expectations, right, which just gets in the way of the beautiful gifts that travel provides. Uh, including transformation. So I'm really excited to see how the industry evolves and starts to embrace this as something that, that you can be more intentional about, bring more frameworks and tools and practices to uh, to really start to, to learn to guide transformations. Um, you know, so it, it, I think the industry is going to be slow on that, uh, to be honest. But, uh, uh, you know, once once they start to open up to it, I think everyone's going to recognize the potential and, and uh and start to look at travel in, in a completely or through completely different lens. I think I honestly, I think that, uh, um, uh, as, as Jorge said, you know, we're disconnected. There's a lot of noise and, and there's a lot of chaos. And I, you know, I think a lot of us are struggling more in our lives than we may lead on to. And, uh, and then you talk about this idea of transformation and it's incredibly uncomfortable. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's a loaded word. And, uh, I think that, you know, People, uh, you know, most of us, uh, you know, feel a barrier uh, to engaging in anything that 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 makes you feel like you're going to be changed. Even though you might be desiring change, the idea of activating change is a completely different, uh, completely different thing, right? And uh, and so I think that that, that the, the actual term itself seems to be um, a, a bit of an obstacle uh, for us at, at this stage, mm -hmm. even though uh, most of us are craving it. Yeah, it's funny. You know, though. Francis, one of the things, you know, Francis, one of the things that uh, Jake said that I think is really important is um, it's easy to promise transformation, and it's much harder to deliver. But we, as experienced strategists, we know that you can't promise something that you can't deliver. You mm -hmm. actually have to try to find ways to deliver on trans, uh, transformative experiences. Uh, otherwise, uh, the whole entire category could fall apart before we ha even have an opportunity to explore it because customers will back away and say, that's not what is of interest to me. So, Yeah, and I think it is not dissimilar to the trajectory of wellness as a word, as an idea. It was French. For a long time, it was something that felt like it was only for the elite and maybe those who were, were, were outside the norm. And what we've watched over the last decade and really especially the last five years is that it went from, it went to peak and now it's sort of in a post peak zone where it is, uh, it became so pervasive that we, we no longer, um, we no longer relate to the idea or the concept. And 
any of the same ways that we used to as consumers. And I, I say that as somebody who um, worked with the Weight Watchers team and with Oprah Winfrey and so many others in those early days of trying to rebrand a weight-focused, outcome-based company to a wellness-focused company and how sort of just radical that seemed at one point. And now it's like, meh, yeah, that's what it does. And I, I do think that we had, we're gonna see a lot of parallels there. But to Jorge's point, he said at the very beginning, he's got these two customers. He's got the customer who's like, I'm all in. I'm dreaming a transformation. Sign me up for the immersion. And then he's got the others that are like, let me just dip my toe in the water. Give me a little bridge to transformation. And maybe I'm not even ready to admit to Jake's point that I want transformation, but secretly, I kind of wonder if I do. <laughs> and so it's like these these two consumers, and there's a lot, there's a lot more interesting segmentation within there, of course, and a lot of different needs to, to meet. But I do think you're right, uh, Jorge, that there, there are sort of these two camps of people in there thinking about it. And so as we talk about it, it is a matter of finding language and storytelling that helps people perceive the value in a way that's accessible to them and doesn't create distance between their goals and the, their understanding of these themes. Well, and Arantis, I've heard you say on a number of times that people aren't always ready to go. Nope. And I think you're gonna have lots of customers that are gonna go on transformational travel for the pure purpose of enjoying it, not because they're interested in the transformation. There's nothing wrong with that. We should not disparage in any way the fact that they're not ready for a transformation. In fact, from a business standpoint, you're more likely to get them back the second time because maybe they're more ready the second time or the third time or the fourth time to really go through that transformation. It's not a lose situation when uh, somebody goes on transformational travel, but they're not quite prepared for it. I think it can be a really positive thing as long as they recognize uh, it in themselves that mm -hmm. they weren't quite ready for it and you're okay. You're not trying to push it in some way, shape or form, right? Right. And that, that I think is, is the most important piece of what you're saying there. It's about getting to know the traveler or the customer in such a way that your solution, your offering is responsive to their needs and not just because it's what you want them to do. Yeah, I'd, I'd jump in and say that, uh, you know, the, a lot of times it's just a matter of re-centering it around like, it can still be playful. You're still going to have great food and wine. You're still going to go to the beach. You're just going to be a little bit more intentional, a little bit more aware, a little bit more present, right? Like if you're asking anybody why they want to go on a trip, I think it would come down to, I want to feel more alive. Uh, you know, and when we feel more alive, we have, we, we have moments of clarity, we gain confidence, uh, we have moments of calm. Uh, all of these things lead to an awareness that even if you aren't, you know, actively seeking transformation, you're changing you're evolving, right? Especially when you're in uh, different cultures, different places and different languages. Uh, so a lot of it's just flipping that switch. And to Dave's point, you know, you might not be setting out to transform on the first one, uh, you know, but on the second one, like, hmm, you know, something shifted in me last time. Uh, you know, what, what, what were the conditions? You know, what, what was I doing in that moment to create that epic travel story that, that, that I had uh, that inspired some change when I got home? Mm. Yes, I think that's a good point too. If we do it well and it creates individual impact, the stories tell themselves in the most authentic way, which is through word of mouth. So my, my, my feeling is that um, what has changed from way, the way we travel in the past and how we travel now is that technology has changed a lot. So maybe uh, like people of our age is more able to remember that when you used to travel, you, you were really able to disconnect from home. You know, calling back home was difficult, was expensive. You know, you did have emails, but they were not with what they are today. So when you were on the new destination, we didn't have mobile phones. So we were able to really connect to the new destination. But now we're, never, we're not 
we're never able to unplug from home. We're always connected to home. We're always connected to work. We're always connected to home problems, you know, the news, you know, social media. And um, so before I think it was easier for you to change because you were really unplugged from 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 home, from the problems, from what you the, what you left behind. But now we have a lot more connection, and that makes it more difficult to disconnect, to to get really immersed into the new culture, into the new place. And that's where uh, transformational travel uh, makes sense, because then you start creating those opportunities to happen. And for me, you know, people that will get involved is those that has already traveled. If it's your first time abroad, you know, it's when your first time that you live in home, all the noise, all the new places, all the new smells will transform you somehow. And a lot of that transformation, we, didn't, we do not realize it until we go back home. It's when we go back home that we realize, wow, you know, that this is how much I change. Um, but then when, when, when you start traveling more and more, um, then you, 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 you start to understand um, that, that it is a good tool and that, that you want to get more immersed. But from my perspective, if within transfer, in, in the traditional travel, if we just allow people to set an, an, an intention when they travel, that, 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 that very a small difference in how you start your journey, you know, with an intention uh, and a deeper intention that goes a bit beyond seeing a new place. Um, the transformation will start. And, and, and of course, you could take the horse to water, but you could not force it to drink. So, so you could not promise transformation. Uh, you just put the, the options and the experiences. But at the same time, you need to be open to it. And sometimes, uh, even when you're not open, you realize that uh, transformation has happened when, when, when you go back home. So I think that's part of the beauty of it. I am so glad you brought that up, Jorge. We recently uh, launched the 2023 Experience Strategy Trend Report. And one of the, the trends that we talk about is the integration of well-being and the role of intention setting in guiding an experience, especially when we're talking about effectively meeting our traveler or customer's needs. And I reached out to Jake because he knows everyone and said, who do you believe? is doing the best job in this space. And, and he shared with me a couple of companies that, that he's worked with that have brought intention and reflection very mindfully into a central role of the traveler's experience. So I wonder, Jake, if you could just share a couple of examples that you've seen. Uh, yeah, you know, there's this uh, uh, organization in, in Portugal called Walking Mentorship, uh, and, and Zhao is the owner, and they're ally members of the TTC. And uh, he uses this uh, the, the concept of pilgrimage and, and walking as this opportunity to, to go through these transformations. So he runs these small group uh, walking trips all throughout Spain and Portugal and, and Italy, uh, and, and everyone goes and they engage in a process well before they land, uh, you know, in the destination once they're, once they're on a walk and when they, when they return. And a lot of that's centered around, you know, getting the, the individuals, uh, you know, connected to their motivations. You know, why are, why are they there? Where are they now? Wh where do they want to be after that journey? Uh, you know, and how are they going to get there? Uh, and then, so he's got an, a really beautiful process that that you know uh, lays it out in front of the the individual. Says this is this is what you're this is why you're here, and this is how you're going to engage, and and you're going to have these moments of of observation and reflection. You're going to have these moments where you get to walk with someone that you, that you've never met before, and uh, and just really really grounds the experience uh, in in a, in a primal way of just in that rhythm of you know walking through countrysides. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I, I hear all the time, uh, you know, from, uh, you know, stories of their clients that, you know, have these, you know, small T transformations, but also these big T transformations. And so, you know, I think they're a wonderful example that some of an organization that is 
totally embraced, uh, you know, transformation and, 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 and transformational travel and, and uh, have been doing it for quite some time. Uh, you know, there's quite a few of those smaller organizations that have been sort of a- ahead of the curve and, and, and always rooted in, in catalyzing travel for change. Uh, you know, but I think, you know, most of the, the larger enterprise organizations, uh, you know, they're, they're still out of touch. And it's really difficult to put in framework and processes that guide transformations, you know, which is one of the things I'm really excited about with the collaborative that we're in, uh, is to make this accessible for most and to have processes that can be, that are implementable. So what would you like to see these big top tier enterprises do in the transformational travel space as an entry point? Um, you know, I, I came across the, this uh, data and American Express trend report that came out today. Uh, and I was really excited to see that, that 62% of, the, of the, the individuals that were surveyed want to be, want to be more thoughtful about where and how they travel. Uh, and that's fantastic news. Uh, you know, but I, but I, I immediately saw a glaring hole, which I think uh, is, is where I'd like to go with answering this question is, is why. You know, mm. if, if, if organizations just asked why, uh, you know, and, and, and we've talked to Rancis about that why tree concept. It's like, you know, you can say, why do you want to travel? Well, I'm, I want to go, I want to go to the beach and relax. You know, well, why do you want to go to the beach and relax? Well, because I'm, 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 I'm tired. I'm burnt out. Well, why are you tired and burnt out? Well, because I'm been working 60 hours a week. Well, why have you been working 60 hours? And you just continue. And then eventually you land at these really, uh, true and pure re- motivations for why we engage anything, you know, so I would recommend that anybody that's really interested in getting into this work that, that, you know, as Simon Sinek says, start with the why. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think you're right. And I think, frankly, companies that are larger get scared of having that data because you can't ask for it and not use it. That's worse than not asking. And I think a lot of these companies just don't know how to effectively use that data. Unfortunately, even companies that have dedicated their entire product and experience to using a person's why struggle with it. I do believe, though, that in the work that we're doing, we've found some highly scalable and effective ways to accomplish that. And that's that's part of what I'm most excited about, frankly, in the, the Transformation Economy Collaborative work that we've done so far. It makes me think of the guest speaker we had in Chicago at the first workshop that was that talked about relationships, mm-hmm. right? Like by just asking why, you're immediately deepening the relationship with the customer. And it, in my mind, isn't that what it's all sort of about anyway, right? Like it, building a relationship with your customer, uh, you know, and and it's hard to do, and if if you don't know them or why they why are they why they're there, uh, so you can really serve them and and guide them on their journey. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Julie Fleischer, such a, such a smart she was great. insight. Yeah, I agree. We'll have to get her on the show soon. Um, if you're listening to this, go check her out on LinkedIn. She always has really valuable insights to share there. Julie Fleischer, we'll uh, link to her in the show notes as well. So as we start to wrap up this conversation that, as you know, I could probably... <laughs> Stay in side for the next couple of weeks talking to you guys about. I want to know what you believe experienced strategists in general should take from the work that we're doing on transformation, and whether through the lens of transformational travel or transformation in general. And I'm going to start with you, Dave, to set us up. And then Jake and Jorge, I'd love to hear a couple of thoughts from you as well. Yeah, I'm glad you said it the way you did. We have been talking about travel uh, for this particular episode, and there's certainly some tremendous things that are happening in travel, but transformation is something that almost every category needs to be paying attention to. And there are different types of transformations. What you experience from travel may not be what you experience from a retail situation or from the clothes that you buy or from your health care or even from your financial institution. Um, but what we think is going to happen is that more and more customers are going to expect that in certain situations, you are going to be able to help them 
progress through a change that they're interested in making. And that's transformation and you need to be ready for it. So I think it's an important topic that we need to keep building on and more and more experienced strategists need to be paying attention to. I agree. What do you think, Jorge? What should people take away from this episode? So for me, it's like Jay talk about the why, which is super interesting and important, but also you need to think where you want to be. You know, it's like mm. uh, my, 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 one of my, my biggest learn from being a mountain biker, I love mountain biking, is that you learn that if you focus on the tree, you will hit the tree. You know, if you, <laughs> you just focus on the tree, you will hit the tree. So you need to take your eyes towards the trail that you want to take. And as soon as your eyes goes in that direction, everything goes in that direction, your whole body, the bike, everything goes in that direction. And I think that in life is like that. Is it more difficult because you cannot see the trail? But when you start seeing where you want to be, what's the trail that you want to go, everything in your life will start switching in that direction. So starting with the, with the question that you begin uh, this interview where, what are your goals for 2023? Or what are, what, how do you want to see yourself? And so, so when, when you use, like transformation is related to that, to where you are now, um, you transform towards what you want, where you want to be. So that's also one of the questions. And somehow now, because of our busy lives, we're so immersed in, in how busy we are that, um, that we, don't, we don't take the time to, to focus on that. And, and, and again, travel is a great tool for that. And every company, like, like if you're a retailer, is like when you're selling a product, you should ask your client, why are you buying that? Where do you want to be with that? And, um, and with travel, the beautiful, again, is that you, you get that moment to be with yourself outside of your regular life. And, and so it makes it a bit more easier sometimes to see that where. So the why, but also the where you want to be. Well said. Jake. Uh, yeah, I, I would say um, that, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about intention. Uh, and I think that a missing link for most is, is often reflection and, and meaning making. And I think to, to, to really weave that in when we're, we're guiding transformations, you know, you, you kind of have to move, the, you know, shift their mindsets away from, at least in the travel context, from doing to, to be, uh, you know, and, and the Transformational Travel Council, we have this, uh, uh, this prompt for, for travelers, you know, to get out of that, that, that checklist mindset, you know, and just go or, and bucket list mindset. Uh, and it's just travel with heart, uh, an acronym for, you know, be humble, be engaged, be awake, be resilient, and then of course be be thankful. Uh, you know, and if if we start to to really embody that, uh, you know, the opportunities to transform start to emerge, right? And we're we're because we are stretching, we are learning, we are growing, uh, and and eventually, you know, after that reflection and meaning making process, you got to take action. You know, that's that's when the transformation you know sort of sets in. Thank you. Well said, all of you, and. Because we human beings at a fundamental level are wired for change and have sought transformation as long as our species has existed. It's just that used to we turn to our, our communities, those closest to us to help guide us on transformation. Now we are in a place as a society for all the reasons that Jorge shared, our dispersion technology reliance, et cetera, that now we need to hire guides to transform us. And we expect those transformations to be effective and impactful. And so truly to those of you listening, whatever category you're in, whatever goals you have for your company and your customer, you have a place to play in the transformation economy. And, and so I'll ask you <laughs> the same question that I just asked Dave, Jorge and Jake, what do you believe you need to do in order to effectively and deeply impact your customer success to help them really get in touch with what matters to them and to help them create a sense of personal 
transformation and impact with your experience. And I hope you'll share those answers with us. This is the start of what we hope is a continued conversation, not just between the four of us, but with all of you. So please check us out on YouTube uh, with the, uh, the Experience Strategy Podcast YouTube channel, of course, and find the Experience Strategy Trend Report to keep learning more. All of that you can link to via stonemantle.co or experiencestrategypodcast.com. Thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing your goals. And Jake, Jorge, thank you for doing the big important work that you're doing. Please keep spreading the word, keep championing change, keep championing true impact and creating spaces for people to get out of the rut of what is and explore what could be. Thanks all for listening. Thanks, Francis. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Experience Strategy Podcast. If you're having fun nerding out with us, please follow and share wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Find more episodes and continue the conversation with us at experiencestrategypodcast.com.